Lisa, we're with Calvary Baptist Church and uh, um, uh, Heavy Deep and Real Ministries. Got a couple more people coming. Hey, welcome, guys. Um, uh, I, I forgot my little face shield thing, so I think I'm six feet away from people. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cheat so you can actually hear me. And, and I, I used to have a, a lady in the back that read lips, and so it was really hard for her to actually hear me um, through, the, through the muffling. Shh, here she comes. No, <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Are we going, Lisa? Are we good? Okay. So I'm going to open in prayer, and then we're going to jump right into it. Father, thanks for just everything. Thanks for the breath of life. Thanks for um, a day that wasn't as sunny as yesterday. Thanks, Lord, that uh, uh, we could all gather here tonight and, and just, you know, more than two of us in your name. You're here with us, so thanks for that, Lord. Ask, Lord, that uh, the words that you've given me land where they're supposed to. Uh, may you give us soft hearts, ears to hear, and just an opportunity to, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you got for us. Give us tonight and uh, uh, maybe even surprise somebody. Uh, I don't know who needs to hear this, Lord, but surprise somebody tonight with some word that they need. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So it is Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week, right? Jesus t- starts teaching in the temple, right, tomorrow. Uh, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna the highest, right? All this stuff. Uh, Monday, Thursday, where he's with his guys, right? And then uh, goes to Gethsemane, gets arrested. Friday, Good Friday, he's crucified. I don't know why they call it Good Friday, but okay. Uh, and Because it's good for us, not good for him. And then uh, uh, Sunday, he is risen. He's risen indeed. And I'm not going to talk about any of that because perhaps you've been to church today and had a Palm Sunday service. I'm going to talk about something completely different that God put on my heart today. Actually, I would, how, how I write sermons, so you know, is I start thinking about these things about a week, week and a half before I go wherever I'm going to be preaching. And, and I kind of ponder, I, I, I pray, I say, God, what do you want me to talk about? And what God is doing is, is searching your hearts. Because I could preach on anything. This book's got a couple thousand pages in it. I can just pick one and preach on anything, right? But I never do that. Because God's searching your hearts to tell me what it is I should be talking about. So when I do these things, I don't know where it's going to land. I don't know who it's for. It could be for one person. It could be for all of you. But, um, so that's why tonight I'm not talking about Palm Sunday or any of the Easter Holy Week stuff. I am going to talk about what we call the existential question. See, at least I did use that word. The existential question is that question they've been, they've been asking since Pluto and Socrates. Uh, why am I here? Why, why am I here? So first I'm going to start with a question to you. Raise a hand. Anybody ever wish they'd never been born? See, I'm, I'm going right to the heart right now. I'm, not, I'm just not going to even, we're just going for it. Yeah, I've been that way. I I wrote a book, and in my book, I started it by saying that I remember my very first prayer. I was about three or three and a half, four years old. My very first prayer was, God, don't let me wake up in the morning. And then my life got worse from there. I've been in that place where I don't want to be born. This is dumb. I didn't choose this, right? And, but then you realize there's this old saying that you're on this side of the grass for a reason. (laughs) If you're on this side of the grass, God's got a purpose for you. But does it really feel that way? Are there days where it's like, I just don't see it? Right? So I want to be real with you tonight and, and talk about um, really why we're on this side of the grass, what this is all about, what Scripture says, and, and, and give you a little bit of hope and encouragement if you're feeling that way, if you're wondering what the heck this is all about. Because sometimes, you, you know, life will just beat you down. And you got to know that there's a hope. You know, all the, all the scripture stuff says, oh, you got to have hope and joy and rejoice in all circumstances and be content. And, and it's like, that's great words. But how do I live it? You know, what does that look like if you're in a position where it's like, oh, gosh, I really wish I hadn't been born. This, is, this life is just too much. So I want to go into that tonight. A, a nice uplifting topic on Palm Sunday. <laughs> It can't all be fun and games. Uh, so, so first, you know, to first understand this, you got to understand why God created man. Did he need us? No. Was he lonely? Was God up there going, oh, I'm so lonely. I think I need a pet. No. No, right. God, was, was, it, was it vital part of the plan? No. 
So you go, you go well, you're creative God, and, and you're eternally in relationship with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You don't really need us. You, you got the heavenly host. You got a bazillion, gazillion angels. Why, why us? And the answer is actually pretty simple. He wanted us. And if you stop right there and think about that for just half a second, he wanted us. Any, any of you guys got kids? Any of, them, any of you have kids you actually wanted? <laughs> a couple of you caught that. A couple of you caught that. A couple of you are like, what? <laughs> you had a choice not to have kids. You didn't have to have kids, but you wanted them. And in that moment where you looked them in the eye that first time, that, that boy or girl, and, and there was something that was just different about how you felt about this little munchkin, that's a little glimpse into how God felt. He wanted us. He didn't have to have us, but he wanted us. And, and it's important that we get that. See, D David in Psalm 8 says this, When I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, now I think he's talking about well, all that God has done, the moon, the stars, which you have ordained. God's created all this. What is man that you are mindful of him? So when you see this big universe, ever see that, that, that thing on the internet where they, they say, you are here, and they pull out into this universe and into the galaxies, and you're like this little boop beep. And you're like, wow, God, wow. We're just this little specky, specky thing. Yet he wanted us. And David's even asking, what are we that you even mindful of us? We're nothing. But that's not what God says about us, is it? Uh-uh. So he says, and the son of man that you visit him, the Son of Man that you visit him, he, he's with us. You know, as those of us in the faith, we're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was with us. The Holy Spirit is indwelling us. We're with God every moment of every second of every day. Who is man that you think about that? But this is interesting. It says, you have crowned him with glory and made him a little lower than the angels. You know you're crowned with glory? Not only did God want you, he didn't have to make you. It's not like you went, you know what, 1964, Tom would be a good idea. I don't think anybody thought that, including my parents. I think that was a complete mistake. Now, I got, a, I got, I got, I got another thing to tell you, so listen to this one. If anybody take your birthday, go back nine months and you'll find some holiday. I'm just telling you. I'm just saying. I got here because of some weird holiday. He made us a little lower than the angels and crowned us with glory. Not only did he want you, he crowned you with glory. Did he crown the angels with glory? Not according to this. He, you. So God looks at, at you and goes, wow, crowned you with glory. I wanted you. You're here on purpose. God's purpose. So the real first thing you've got to understand about the framing of this question is why was I born? Because God said so. Because God wanted you. Now, let me ask a really hard question. You don't have to show hands unless you want to. Um, and if you really want to, show too. Uh, have you ever been unwanted? Yeah. That pretty much sucks, huh? But you've never been unwanted. See, in this worldly place, we can feel very unwanted. Family can betray us. You know, Jesus was betrayed. He knows about betrayal. Family can leave us. Uh, friends, they come and go like the wind, right? Uh, it sometimes feels like no one wants you. But if you're on this side of the grass, you've always been wanted. And you've not just been wanted now. You've been wanted eternally. Since the beginning of time, God knew he was going to make you and he wanted you. Now, he didn't have to have you. And I want to I pound that point home. God didn't like go, oh, crap, I got to get a Tom. <laughs> I don't want him, but uh, I guess I'll have to make him. <laughs> That's not how it worked out. Eternally, he's like, I get, I get this guy, Tom. He is going to be a pain in my side, but we're going to work it out. Right? So when you think about God and your relationship with him, and this, this hardship of this life that we live, 
where you're feeling sometimes unwanted, you don't want to be born, you're feeling like this, I, this has no purpose, I don't know what I'm doing. You got to stop and understand the origin story of why you're here. Scripture says you are not here just because two people got together and hooked up. You're here because God ordained you. That's a big deal, don't you think? The God of the universe said, yeah, I think I'll need one of those. But it gets better. It gets better if I can turn my page. If not, we're all going home. <laughs> See, in John 3.16 says, God so loved the world. God so loved you. So the second part about why were you here? Why were you born? What is the purpose? Well, first is God wanted you. Why do you want you? Because he loved you. Anybody been unloved? Yeah. Anybody been left? Someone told them they loved them and left them? Yeah, that, that feels great, huh? Makes you have trust issues. <laughs> Once bitten, twice shy. It never happened with God. From the very beginning, he loved you. Right? I always tell people that, that God loves you right where you are. He loves you too much to leave you there. Right? He's going to move you forward. But he loves you. Always has. Always will. Can't love you any less. Can't love you any more. Now, does that mean he loves everything you do? No. Thank you for that. <laughs> I always worry when the person says, yeah! It's like... <laughs> See me after class. Uh, for God so loved the world. He loved his creation. He, he's a very, very loving, caring, merciful. All the grace and all the stuff we hear about, all the good stuff is like, that's why he made you. Right? And even when Adam and Eve fell in the garden when they screwed up, right? They, they, they wanted to do their own thing, be like God. God still made a way for them to be reconciled. That's how we know he loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whomever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. The whole idea was that, that oh, well, you screwed up. I'm going to make a way for you to reconcile. That's how much he loves you. Did he have to do that? Nah. He said, he could have been like, oh, you're killing me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if you were God? You do, that, you do that whole flood thing because the people are just like, yeah, I, I grieve even making you. And so you leave Noah and they do it again. You're like, what is with these people? Right? Yeah, it's like, I love them, I love them, I love them, I love them. Right? That's how we'd all be. But God's not like that. He loves us, which is why he created us, because he wanted to be in relationship with us. He didn't want us just to, you know, be like all the other gods where you're trying to earn your way to them or, or p pacify them somehow by throwing someone in a volcano or whatever you do, right? You cre all the creation stories are great. You know, there's some similarity to them, but our creation story is the only one where God wanted us because <laughs> he loved us, which is pretty cool if you think about it. So in your life, this world's a hard place. Jesus said, you'll have, you'll have trouble in this life. But you don't have trouble with God. Even if you're mad at him. Anybody mad at God right now? Mm. Liars. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Some people, you can be mad at God. It's okay, he's big. He can take it. Even if you're mad at God, he's not mad at you. He gets it. You can wrestle with God. It's okay. Because he loves you. you, you how, many, how many got kids? Kids ever mad, mad at you as a parent? Yeah. Did you stop loving them? Like, oh, you stupid little brat. No, I hate you because you're mad at me. You ever have a teenage daughter? I hate you. I'm never talking to you again. Slam. So much drama. And as a parent, you're just like, Ugh. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. You little demon. <laughs> right? You don't stop loving them. You may not like them at the moment. Right? Well, God's that way with us. He loves us no matter what, even when we're mad at him, even if we're having a struggle, even if we don't understand it. You know, time's on his side, <laughs> well, luckily. <laughs> so you've got to remember this framing of this question when you're having a hard time 
about why am I here? What's my purpose? What am I, what is this all about? Why would God even make me? Why would he even care about me? After everything I've done, there's no way this, this God can even think about me. That's what David was saying. Who are we that we are mindful? I mean, think about David for a second. This guy is out killing people, sleeping with his best friend's wife, getting him killed. I mean, this is not <laughs> David, David. <sighs> Who is man that you're thoughtful? Why would you think of David? I mean, wow. And he's like, oh, he's a man of my own heart. <laughs> you ever see a dog looking into a fan? <laughs> David was a man of God's own heart because he always stayed in a relationship, even when it wasn't working out so well. All right? My wife and I were talking about this on the way over. Um, we don't always agree, if you can believe that. Sometimes she's wrong. And... Uh, <laughs> Y'all didn't buy that. Um, Sorry, we don't believe uh, but we work on it. We work on it. We work on it. We work on it. And there's been topics that we've revisited a thousand times, and we're going to revisit a thousand more times. But we're going to stay married because we're committed. Or should be committed, one of the two. <laughs> I, tell, I tell people that love doesn't conquer all. Intentionality does. Right? So God is intentional. He made you on purpose. He's intentioned you. You were made for his good purpose to have relationship with him because he wanted you. He doesn't love you because it's like one big wet sloppy kiss. Oh, my people. <laughs> he intentioned you. And when that kind of covenant happens, when that kind of relationship happens, you can always count on it. Now, can you count on anybody down here? Uh, we're all fallen. We're all broken. We all do dumb stuff. And that's why scripture always says, look to the heavens. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Because down here, you're not, it's tough. You're not going to know what you're going to get. But with God, you always know what you're going to get. Because it's an intentional relationship where you were made on purpose to be on this side of the grass. And I'm going to tell you in a minute to do what. Okay? <laughs> oh, let me talk about something hard. Let's talk about why we didn't want to be born. It's not like we came out of the room one, hey, I want back in. It's like, <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't know. We didn't know. It's like, whoa, <laughs> this is not what I plan on. It's later in life after you've had some experiences, and most of those experiences are bad. And really what's happened is this. Either somebody has transgressed or sinned against you, and you've been the victim of that, either directly or indirectly. You could be collateral damage. Or you made some decisions, and there are some consequences for them. And some of those consequences really suck. <laughs> and you didn't think through it. Those are really the two things that cause you to have a hard life, except if there's a natural disaster. If there's a natural disaster, well, then that's just something, you know, <laughs> fallen creation, and that got you. But for the most of us, when we say we didn't want to be born, it's because of the circumstances of life are really hard. So I'm three and a half, four years old. What's going on in my life? My dad's gone to jail. I didn't know that. I, he was just gone. My family was separated. I had three older sisters. They're who knows where. My mom has multiple sclerosis. She can't walk. She's bedridden. She and I end up in Florida with her, grand, with her parents, who are German. So there was a lot of love there. <laughs> the only time you got touched is if you did something wrong. I'm three and a half, four years old changing my mother's bedpan because I had chores was not a good life. Everything, all the things I was supposed to bond to were taken. And that was like the first of a dozen times that was gonna happen in life. And I didn't understand it. I mean, as a child, what do you understand? But it very much plays with your developmental psychology, doesn't it? Because children have developmental psychology pieces. And if one of those pieces gets screwed up along the way, guess what? <laughs> as you become an adult, it's still screwed up. <laughs> And so all of us as adults here may have these feelings, these dark feelings about life, about being born, because maybe something happened along the developmental way. Didn't happen to us as adults. Sometimes it's that. Sometimes we're dumb. We're dumb. John Wayne had this great line. He says, life's hard. It's harder when you're stupid. <laughs> you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's all seemed like fun and games until it caught up with you. And those things make us very, very bitter. 
And Jesus warned us about it, right? He, he told us that you're going to have these things. But he also gave us a solution, didn't he? We think that, we think we're alone in this. Okay. I, want to, I want to share this with you so you really get the framing. You know, everyone that's ever been born except Adam and Eve were sinners. Or as I, or as I saw somebody the other day said, if you got a belly button, you're a sinner. Because Adam and Eve didn't have belly button. <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, get it? Think about it. <laughs> you all are moms. Come on, think about this. Yeah. No umbilical cord. Okay. Okay, I get it. I know, you're, you know, help, help your sisters out, would you? Yes. Okay. So if that's true, if every one of us was born in this condition, we all deserve hell, every one of us. Yet you, hopefully, have heard the voice. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. What? That was like a joke. A lot of us don't get it. Adam and Eve didn't have umbilical cords because they were created from the dirt. They weren't created oh, from the womb. Thank you. Yeah. Belly button. Yeah, belly button. The only way you have a belly button is a... Okay. Thank yeah. you. I mean, honestly, it's all really gross as far as I'm concerned, so... Thank you. You're welcome. So, every one of us should be going to hell, but you gave us a way out because of Jesus. So there's no one better or worse off than you. (laughs) Everyone's in the same boat paddling like crazy. And we're blessed, those of us that are here to have heard Jesus' voice, because he says, my sheep hear my voice. And now here's the other blessing. Um, After everything that's happened to you, good, bad, ugly, God doesn't say, now you have to perform for me. I I just want you to have faith. He's the only one that you have to perform for. He is the only one. Absolutely. Absolutely. You go, you go get your driver's test. They want you to look in that thing and actually see stuff. I mean, <laughs> what the heck's wrong with those people? You get to be my age, that becomes a chore. Yeah. No, you're right. Everything in this world is about performance except Jesus. And so, again, it's about framing your life. If you're in this place where it's like, I just don't want to be here. I get it. I've been there. But understand you're here because God wanted you here. He loves you. He, he's consistent. He's never going to let you down on those things. And the fact is, there's no one better or worse than you. Everyone is in the same boat. And you have something a lot of people don't have. You have the Lord, right? And this is the other part. I, I preach about this with you folks all the time. God can bring good out of all things for, the per, for those who love him, Scripture says, right? God brings good out of all things for those who love him, if you let him. Your greatest ministry comes from your greatest pain. How many of you have pain? How many know how to use that for ministry? Deidre and I were talking about that uh, the other day. It's about how do you take, you know, a graduate. She, she graduated the program. Now what? Well, I've always said if you come out of the dark, you have a responsibility of going back into the dark and leading others out to the light because you know the way. Right? Who's gonna else, who else is going to get them out? You're the one that knows the path. But that means going back into that greatest pain and helping others because to whom much is given, much is expected. Right? So this gets to Ephesians 2.10. Before the beginning of the world, God had created you to do good works for him. You were purposed. Not only did he love you and he wanted you, he wanted a relationship with you. He wants his covenant, right? Never let you down. But he's like, oh, I got stuff for you to do. <laughs> and you're the only one that can do it. I can't do your job. You can't do what I do. You're not supposed to. And so when we think about why am I here, the first part is because God wanted you. You're wanted. You're intentional. You're purposed. You are not a mistake. You're not an accident. You're not an afterthought. You're not an oops. You're here because God said, this is what I want. And that should be good enough. But if it's not good enough, you got to understand that the reason he wanted you because he loves you. The same way you would love a child. Now, I'm not going to show our hands here because, you know, this would be like a weird question. But if you had a child you weren't expecting, (laughs) my wife and I have all sorts of kids we mentor. We call them our unplanned children. We have a lot of unplanned children. (laughs) Sometimes you end up with an unplanned child. Okay. Do you love it any less? No. Shouldn't. Now, I I get the circumstances around it may be really difficult, right? But when you look in that child's eye, not the child's fault. It is, you know, you love that child. 
So even if you were unplanned, which you're not, God still loves you. <laughs> See, put yourself in his shoes for a second. And see why he did what he did. Don't just look at what he did. Ask yourself, why would he do that? Who is man that you'd think of him? Well, man is crowned with glory. I think he's the most wonderful of my creations. It's incredible. I put all of the earth under his domain. I trust him implicitly. I allowed Job to fight Satan because I trust God so I trust man so much. Look what I've done. I've given you Jesus. I've given you the Holy Spirit. You are heirs to the throne. You are uh, sons and daughters of the Most High. You... Wow, God must really like you. I always tell people, God has to love you because God is love. <laughs> but God likes you too, even on your worst days. So, when you think about this framing that I'm giving you a little bit differently than maybe you've heard before, everyone hears God is love. But the intentionality piece of it, I really want you to stick with. This, this is, you are here because... He wants you here. He has work for you to do. Most of your work will come from your greatest pain. You will reach people I'll never reach. You'll be able to talk to G about Jesus to people I'll never see. It's not, the, it's not the preacher's job to do this. It's your job. Right? We are the hands and feet. You are the hands and feet. So given the framing, there's two ways you can look at your life. There's the wrong way of saying, why was I born? And that's about a self-focus. My life is miserable. I'm a victim. Things have happened to me. And then there's the right way to look at that and say, this place sucks. It's evil. I want to be with Jesus. Paul said to be with Christ is to be out of the body is to be with Christ. I don't know what I want more. He goes, if I'm here, there's work to do. But if I'm with him, awesome. Which is why he said to live is Christ, to die is gain. So the encouragement is... Things like this. Set your minds on things above and not on earthly things. To live is Christ. To do his work. Cool, huh? You get to do things for Christ. What's better than that? To die is gain. There's nothing to fear. How about this one? Do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vermin, vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal. Store up your treasures in heaven. Keep your eyes up, not down. You ever notice when you're, where do you look when you're depressed? Yeah. What do you like when you're happy? I got a little puppy dog. She's 17 weeks now. She's half pit, half uh, uh, Labrador. She's either a Labrador or a Pitador. <laughs> I call her Pitadorable. We have two other labs. It's just, it's wild at my house. But she's so proud of herself when she does something she likes. She'll grab a stick and she puts her head up in the air and she little prances around. When we're in a good mood, what do we do? We're, we're, you know, heads up. Keep your eyes up here, not down here. You won't like what you see down here. Do not leave, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Father's not in him. And this is why all this scripture is being written, because you're a citizen of heaven. This isn't your home. This fallen place is broken nonsense. You know, Revelation 21, 22, right? We die... New heaven, new earth comes, new Jerusalem comes down. We come back. Why would we have resurrected bodies? I don't need one if I'm in heaven. We all come back to this. We come back to Eden. See, God's plan was Eden, right? Adam and Eve, garden, walking, cool of the day, happy, happy, lions and lambs laying together, tree of life. <laughs> Revelation 21, 22, you get to the end of the book. God's plan, everyone's together, happy, happy, Jesus is the king. It's Eden again. No one thwarts God's plan. No one's that powerful. And we have perfect relationship. Perfect understanding. Perfect knowledge. No more sin. No more pain. No more tears. My cubs will never lose another game. <laughs> Something from the peanut gallery. I didn't quite catch Oh, thanks for repeating it. We don't do that here. <laughs> Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, pick up their cross daily. This is what this stuff means. See, the reason Jesus tells us all these things is not to be a killjoy. He's not saying, your life sucks. I hope you <laughs> He's like, look, 
the life abundant that I want you to have is up here because that's where your citizens, you should feel a little holy discontent living in this world, in this fallen place full of people that are blinded by Satan, that don't have the Holy Spirit, and are doing horrible things to each other. But while you're here, live out Christ. Serve, love, care, show mercy, grace, turn the other cheek, don't judge. All that stuff Jesus said, do all that. Right? Then you'll be doing the will of your Father, he says. But understand, you weren't a mistake to be born in this time. Here's my last thought, why? <laughs> what if you get to heaven and Jesus is like, oh, oh, I've been waiting for you. Well done, good and faithful servant. Hey, I, I want to introduce you to some people that are here because of you. What if it's a family member? What's a kid? What, what if it's someone you never even knew would even think about, couldn't spell Jesus if you spotted him with the vowels? Right? <laughs> what if you get to heaven and you meet people that are there because you did what you were supposed to do in this horrible place? Because you understood what I'm talking about. You were made on purpose, for a purpose, for God's good purpose, to glorify him in all you, at, all you think, do, and say by sharing the gospel, the good news, something you know that as bad as this place can be because it's fallen, there is a better time coming and your eternity is at stake. And we want to share with people how to come out of their pain, out of all of this stuff we talked about, out of, out of being people that don't want to wake up in the morning, who wish God would just kill them and get it over with. What if you can be the person that comes into that person's life and can talk into their life because you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, you have credibility to save that person, not from this life, but for eternity. And you meet them in a heavenly plane, they say, couldn't have got here without you. I can give you chills. Wow. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. So if you're having a hard time and wondering what the purpose is, and you're like, you know, some of these days are hard. Yes, some of these days are hard. Lean on each other. That's what we're here for. That's why the body's got to be together. We're not supposed to stop meeting like most people do, right? We need to encourage each other, lift each other up, help each other. So that we can go out and kick butt and take names. I'm ready. Yeah. So last part. Tomorrow morning when you wake up and your feet hit the ground, be a person that Satan goes, oh, crap, she's up. All God's people said, amen. All right. Thanks for your time, guys.